All right, Mark Rogers, CB, the boys of college football, getting you set for the 2019 season. The boys are in camp across the nation. It's the first week of August, and football is very, very close. Taking a look today at the LSU Tigers, of course, a bit of a bounce back season for Ed Ogeron and company last year. Just five and three in the SEC, but ten and three overall. Won the big bowl game over UCF. Book ended with the Miami win on opening night. A big win at Auburn on the Plains when the Tigers, the Auburn Tigers, were ranked in the top five to ten in the nation, and LSU had a few disappointments later. Obviously, not necessarily the loss against Alabama, but 29 to nothing in Death Valley in a game in which they were prepared and thought they could go toe to toe with the Tide, and they were outgained about 560 to 180. It was a complete massacre, 29 to nothing in that game, and the offense, of course, couldn't muster nothing. Uh, lost to Texas A&M as well, of course, in the season in Florida with a late interception from Joe Burrow. Uh, they couldn't get the job done there. So just 5-3 and three in the SEC, but again, that's in the SEC. 10-3 and three overall, good enough for a legitimate top 10 placement in the country. When we look at the trajectory of this program, it's pretty much been flatlined for a while. Ever since they went to the BCS championship game in January of 2012, they've dipped, and they've stayed on that 9-3, and 8-4 and four plane ever since. Now the recruiting rankings, therefore the talent on the roster, would tell us that they should be much better than that. But over the past four seasons, 21-11 and 11 in the SEC, not bad. Very good conference, uh, the best in college football for most of that time. 21-11, and 11, very good, but not LSU good. 36-14, and 14, nothing close to what... Saban established starting in 2001 with an SEC championship and then running through most of the Les Miles era to that 2011 BCS championship game. This was a, a school that was typically ranked in the top 5 to 10 in the country, won two national championships, and played in another. So 10-3, and 9-4, and 8-4, and 9-3 just doesn't add up, and then 5-3, and 6-2, and 5-3, and 5-3 and three in the SEC. They've not been a serious contender to Alabama to win the SEC championship. The recruiting rankings, though, would tell us that they should have been much better. The 2020 class, of course, has yet to hit the field, but just to give you a feel for what's headed uh, toward Baton Rouge, number two in the SEC, number three in the nation right now, according to the 247 composite. The 2019 class that will be on the field mostly, number four in the SEC, number five in the country, 2018, they were fifth in the SEC, but number 15 in the country. That was the worst class by far, at least statistically. We could go back and look at those 2018 signees and see how well they fared thus far, just with the one season under their belt. 2017, LSU, number three in the nation, number three in the SEC, number seven in the nation in recruiting. Then 2016, number two in the SEC, number two in all of college football. Guess who they were second to, of course, Alabama in 2016. So the trajectory has been flatlined since 2011. They dipped in 2011 after the championship game loss, and they've been a three-loss to four-loss program ever since. But considering what they achieved last year against the competition and the recruiting class coming in, Coach O looks like, after it being a question mark, a big, serious question mark, his hiring that he's got control of this program, and he has gained the respect. He gained the admiration of the players pretty quickly, but the respect of the players and those outside the football operation, Coach O now looks like a legitimate top-of-the-rung SEC coach. And again, the recruiting has been exceptional. Um, so the trajectory going up based on the results last season, the recruiting, and also the hope for this year. Joe Brady coming in as the passing game coordinator from the New Orleans Saints has brought a ton of optimism. Uh, the S&P Plus projected for this year, 15 off, number 15 in the nation offensively. When is the last time LSU ranked 15th in the nation in offense? And listen to this. The S&P Plus projection for 2019 is a number one ranking in defense and number four overall in the nation. Fourth best team in the country. Okay, the offense, of course, led by Joe Burrow. Um, and so those people that just look at the numbers and looked at the level of play and the points on the board, not overly impressed with Joe Burrow. And I get it. 
But if you really delve into what he faced stepping on campus, uh, taking over an offense that hasn't been overly productive in a long time, you got to be impressed with what he did. He basically stepped on campus in the summer, had to learn the offense, the terminology, had to learn his teammates, get acclimated to the locker room, the coaching staff, campus, the whole deal thrown at Joe Burrow, starter, bam, get out there, play Miami, a top 10 defense in the country, right out of the gate, he won the game. 58% completion percentage, I think some of that had to do with the wide receiver play not being as good as it needs to be to be an SEC champion, but 58%, he can do better. 16 TDs, five picks. And believe me, he has been studying his deficiencies during the offseason. He's a coach's kid. That's what he does. He's a gym rat, coach's kid, studies, and he's going to get the max out of his ability. And does he have to adjust the, to the offense? Well, to a certain extent, but not really. This is actually taking Joe, Bra uh, Joe Burrow back to the offense under Brady, uh, the passing game coordinator, uh, to an offense that he's more comfortable and used to, uh, an offense that he has uh, admittedly said, this is what I've run since I was in eighth grade, all the way through Ohio State. You got the sophomore, Miles Brennan, highly regarded coming out of high school, and he's the backup. Okay, the running game does not has not had, at least this past season, the, the big back. Jeremy Hill, Leonard Fournette, Darius Geis. Nick Brissett was a nice player, but should not be a lead back at a place like LSU. He did gain the 1,000 yards with 4.3 per carry. Not an explosive, game-changing kind of back. Uh, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire is back after 4.5 yards per carry and seven touchdowns last year. Okay, the two kids to get excited about, of course. And we'll see if they can make an impact this season, and I believe at least one of them will. You got uh, Tyrion Davis, you got John Emery, ranked number eight and number two in the nation in the running back uh, rankings according to the 247 composite. Two of the top eight running backs in the nation coming to LSU, and uh, they will have their opportunity, and right now they are getting that opportunity to show that they should be on the field. Okay, the wide receiver play needs to get better. Uh, obviously, the peak of the wide receiver play was in that 2013 range, Jarvis Landry, Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, they've got a ton of highly regarded wide receivers on the roster, so the depth is there, but nothing really elite. Uh, Justin Jefferson would be the closest with the six touchdowns and 54 catches last year. He's a nice player. Uh, Derek Dillon plays out at the slot. He's a really quick player, run after the catch guy with 22 catches last year. Terrace Marshall, highly regarded as a freshman. He should get a lot better in this second season. Caught 12 passes last year. Jamar Chase, you got D. Anderson. Uh, Chase caught 23, three touchdowns. Anderson is a 6'7", big guy, uh, high point of football, uh, as well as Stephen Sullivan, another 6'6", guy that can uh, shield out those defensive backs, especially those tiny corners, and he had 23 catches last year. We expect much more out of the LSU wide receivers this year. The offensive line is bringing back 47 starts. Uh, the Fiesta Bowl, to a certain extent, was a precursor to what we're going to see this year when Joe Burrow threw for just one less than 400 yards, 399. They went with less max protection, which is what you expect. One of the UCF defensive coaches actually made that comment uh, coming off the field, shaking hands with the LSU coaches, that he thought they were going to be in max protect, keep the back end, keep the tight end in, max protect, just let the wide receivers do their thing. That's LSU football. Uh, but but they took some chances, and they got the ball out of Burrow's hand quickly. They're going to do much more of that this year because they had the second worst rate of sacks in the SEC last year, uh, but they do have a lot of guys coming back like uh, Sadiq Charles, uh, Damian Lewis, uh, and again, they'll get the running backs out of the backfield a whole lot more this year if they can show, especially in camp, they need them to show that they can be outlet receivers and that they've got the hands and the moxie to do that. All right, again, the defense might be the best in the SEC this year. Uh, Devin White, Greedy, Williams, gone to elite college football players. Uh, but uh, the, the team only gave up 22 points per game, 339 yards per game. They've got eight starters back, seven of their nine top tacklers back. This has got to be the best secondary in the nation with uh, the safety grant Delpit, who might be the best 
football player in the country. 74 tackles last year, 9.5 tackles for loss, 5 sacks, and 5 interceptions. Rarely do you see that type of tackle and uh, yardage lost production in the backfield as a disruptor, plus the picks. Uh, Jacoby Stevens had two, uh, six and a half tackles for loss. The corners are excellent. Christian Fulton is a star in the making. Uh, you got the sophomore in Kelvin Joseph and also, of course, Derek Stingley. Linebacking play, of course, no Devin White. Okay, Jacob Phillips, 87 total tackles last year. Michael Divinity, the senior, nine and a half tackles for loss. And uh, the guy that could really make the defense over the top special, dominant, would be uh, Kalevon at Chasen. He needs to stay healthy. He had the ACL issue last year. Along the defensive front, the defensive line is going to be elite, led by, of course, Richard Lawrence. All right, the schedule. This was my seventh-rated schedule in college football. Please check out my schedule rankings. They're a, they're, they're a source of pride for me. I... I I take hours to look over the schedules and rank them from 70 all the way up to number one in the Power Five. LSU with the seventh most difficult schedule in the country. Of course, they got to go to Texas week two. Win that game. And even though LSU is going to be a four to seven point favorite in that game, win that game on the road against a top fringe top 10 opponent. And then the hype train is going to roll. And rightfully so. Uh, so who do they play in the SEC Eastern Division? Well, they always have Florida, but at least the Gators come to Death Valley this year. And then they get possibly the easiest in the rotation in the SEC Eastern Division with Vandy uh, on the road. And of course, the, the SEC Western Division, they got Alabama and Texas A&M. They got to play uh, Alabama on the road, but they do have uh, Texas A&M at home after they suffered that 74-72 win at Kyle Field last year. My look at the LSU Tigers, I'm intrigued by this team. I'm still contemplating an LSU-SEC Western Division championship. I will have my predictions. Do I make them game by game like a lot of people do? Maybe I do go that route this year. I did that a few years ago, and it was a whole lot of fun, a whole lot of work as well to everything else I do right here at the Voice of College Football, Mark Rogers TV. And people, before you go, Bet online, bet now, betnow.eu. Go to betnow.eu. Down below, we've got the link down below. You get 50% extra uh, to your account. So if you sign up with my promo code, MRTVCFB, MRTVCFB, grab the link down below in the description section next to the hashtag Sam Strong. This is for a great cause that we've explained elsewhere. Uh, it's a cancer fund involving uh, the son of a volunteer roadshow. So please help us out there and uh, do your betting with uh, betnow.eu. Grab the link. Promo code MRTVCFB. See you next time.